I am in love with this plant. I can't wait to get it thriving. Mwah! <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa. If you're new here, so welcome. I'm really happy you're here. For today's video, I'm really excited, you guys, because I purchase plants from the big box stores all the time. I want to take you through my process of what I do once I purchase that plant and how I get it from the store to thriving in my collection. So I'm gonna take you through my process with this plant here. This is my most recent big box store purchase. It's from my last shopping video. I'll link my shopping video up here if you haven't seen it. This is a Calathea and Calatheas are known to be drama queens sometimes. This is the rose one and it was so beautiful I couldn't pass it up. It's just gorgeous. I'm gonna take you through my steps and my entire process. So you've purchased the plant and what do I do with it? First things first, I will say the kitty cat trying to come in. Hi babies, oh my goodness, mommy trying to film. Brief intermission, we have a kitty cat wanting to join us. I guess she just woke up from a nap. Perfect timing. <laughs> I did go out of town through the weekend, so I have not done anything to this plant besides give it just a tiny bit of water before I left. I think I did the shopping video on Wednesday last week. Was it Wednesday? So it's been in my care for about maybe five-ish or so days. First thing is at the store, I'm going to do a quick look over for pests. Sometimes you can spot them right away and sometimes they don't show up until after you have the plant home. So you missed it, you didn't realize it had a pest and you're like, uh-oh, this plant has pests, now what? It's okay, don't panic, you know, just treat for the particular pest that your plant has. If I do spot a plant pest on the plant in the store, I will pass on the plant. I don't like to intentionally bring plant pests home into my collection if I can avoid it. And it's really sad because I have passed up on plants that I really wanted because it had a pest on it. Sometimes I don't if I'm in a rush or it's just like I didn't even think about it. I have brought plants home and they've had pests, but it's okay, you know, just treat for that particular plant pest. I just think to myself, what kind of plant is this? Is it something hardy like a monstera or a phyllo or is it something more sensitive like a calathea. It really depends on the particular plant. I don't like to repot plants right away because you are going to stress the plant out. Now every plant is different. I'm not saying every calathea is going to be the same way. Every monstera is going to be the same way. It really is plant specific and a lot of that has to do with your particular care environment. Those are the two most important things. What kind of plant I'm repotting and how is the environment that I'm going to be caring for this plant in. So for this particular plant, it's a Calathea. They are very tropical plants. They're going to love humidity, warm temperatures. They don't like cold. You want to be mindful of that and try to give this plant the best chance and give that plant those conditions. So a plant coming from the nursery or wherever the plant was and then it got shipped to the big box store. It was in boxes. It's in a dark place. It gets put on the shelf and that plant may have been there a day, two days, a few days before you purchased it and brought it home. That's a lot of changes for that particular plant to go through, so it is going to stress. You want to leave that plant alone for the time being before you mess with it at all because you don't want to induce more stress than you have to. That's just what I do and prefer. I usually like to give the plants a week or two to acclimate before I even think about repotting it but it is, again, plant specific. I have purchased plants that I go to water the plant and the next day it was droopy, like it hadn't been watered. It's because the soil is so hydrophobic, it just repels water. And when you water it, that plant isn't getting any nutrients. And so to me, I think I need to repot that plant in order for it to do better. So I just keep those things in mind. I just always think about the specific plant I'm repotting and the possible outcomes that it may go through. If this plant goes into shock, I know how to rehab it. And rehabbing it isn't something that you can learn about and be able to do it. It just comes with experience and with caring for plants for a while. But if you think about the conditions that that plant likes, they're going to do better and get over that shock period better if you get them in that environment that they like and that they prefer. So I think that's enough chatting. So let's get into caring for this plant. So this is a Calathea, like I said before, and this is just a 
outer pot that it has it in. So I'm gonna take it out of the nursery or out of this pot. Oops, you can't see me. So usually the ceramic pots that they're in, I will take the tags off. I will usually just wash it out with hot soapy water, just in case there's like anything hidden in here. You never know. I like to clean these. By looking at this plant right now, to me this plant seems a little sad. Now, these type of plants are in that family, so their leaves fold up at night and during the day they fold down. So it could be just a little droopy from that or it could just be shock. You know, it is like day five or six since being in my home. Based off my experience with getting plants from the big box store, calatheas sometimes and alocasias are notorious for having a root plug. I don't wanna go into too much details about root plugs. I don't like them. I know it's very controversial and and some people leave them, but calatheas have very thin, sensitive root systems and a root plug or a death plug basically is that little netting that you find wrapped around the base of your plant under the soil. And it's what the plant was started in as a seedling to help that seedling grow. So I understand the importance of using those, but they get left on the plant as they're transferred to a nursery pot. And then they're just filled up with soil around that netting. Now, can some nettings break down over time and can roots push through them? Sure, it really honestly depends on the plant. That soil that's contained within that root ball is staying wet. The plant like in the root system isn't thoroughly drying out in my experience. So I like to get rid of those root plugs. I've had plants do poorly. And then when I check the soil and check the plant, when I go to repot it, it's because it had a root plug and that plant wasn't thriving because of that reason. Now, when you go in here and take the root plug off, you are going to stress the plant. So keep that in mind. It is a risk you are taking and it's up to you whether or not you want to remove it or leave it. Now, once your plants acclimate it should go under less stress, but it's still going to stress. And if it doesn't, then great. I won't disturb the root system that much. There's a way to kind of peek around to see if it has a root plug without really disturbing the plant too much. When plants come from the big box store, most of the time there is fungus gnats flying around because sometimes the soil stays soaking wet for a while. So a lot of the times when I get a plant from the big box store, it has fungus gnat larvae. How I treat for fungus gnats, I am back to using mosquito bits. I have been dumping sprinkling some into the soil and watering it in but I'm actually going to be making a tea because I've had people tell me making a mosquito bit tea is a lot better so I have a little netting here and I'm going to sprinkle some mosquito bits in here and I'm going to let this soak in some room temperature water and then that little juice that tea that seeps out I'm going to water my plants with that and then I'll just toss the mosquito bits so that they don't mold in the soil these can mold if you sprinkle them in the soil or on top and water them in it really doesn't bother me anymore it used to bother me and I think that's why I quit using them but I'm going to make a tea because I heard it works better I will spray with insecticidal soap when I first get a plant just to get rid of anything possibly. I like to clean my leaves when I first get a plant just to get rid of dirt, debris, clean them up, make them look nicer and it just overall will help kill any bugs. I've kind of gotten rid of using neem oil. I just cannot stand the smell and I don't really find it beneficial or useful for me. So I will, most of the times I will use water and peppermint soap by Dr. Bronner's. I mix it up and spray the leaves. But for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna use some insecticidal soap just to kill anything possibly on the plant that I may have missed. I have shears to cut off any dead leaves. I cut off anything that's brown, that's dirty, that's yellow, that's just, I just want off the plant. I will be cutting that. Also going to be watering with Super Thrive. I use this for every plant. It helps it acclimate. I just swear by this stuff. Every time I water with this, my plants do so much better than when I don't use it. It's just based off my personal preference and experience. I am just, I just love Super Thrive. So yeah, I have everything I need. Now I will say the nursery pot the plant comes in, I will spray the pot and underneath and around it just to kill anything that's possibly hanging out. Before I clean the plant, I want to look at the root system and see if there's a root plug. So I'm gonna do that first. I think I'm gonna pan you down just so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit and then we'll go from there. It has one little root on the bottom here, but that's not really a big deal to me. So I will just kind of loosen the plant. Let me take this little tag out. We do not need this in here. 
I'm just gonna squeeze the pot without really disturbing the plant too much. And this just loosens the plant against the edge of the pot and it can help it slide out of there. Most of the time you can get your plant out without disturbing the root system too much. And this plant has a ton of fertilizer balls in here. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of dig at the base of this and see if I can feel a root plug. Now it may not have a root plug, which would be great. I actually don't feel like I see a root plug, which would be surprising. Yeah, I don't see a root plug. Now this soil is sopping wet and I'm gonna just remove some of this top layer. Removing the top layer sometimes will help rid of any like fungus gnat larvae eggs that like to hang out in the first few inches of the soil. But I'm not going to completely disturb this plant because I don't want to stress it out. The main thing is I just wanted to check for a root plug and I don't see one. I sort of wish I had one so you guys can see me do it. Maybe I'll make a part two on another plant that I get that does have a root plug so you guys can see that entire process. So what I'm going to do is I'm fine to use this same pot. I'll just wash the outside of it. And then I'm just going to fill up around with my soil. But before we do that, I am going to get rid of all these dead bits here. So anything that's old, I'm going to remove. I have my shears and I always clean with alcohol. So I don't know the last time I used these and I just like to clean. So anything that's dead, I am going to cut off and remove. Pests like to hang out in the dead parts. I don't know, and it overall makes the plant look nicer. So anything that's dead, I just go all around. I already see a fungus gnat flying. Now I like my Calathea soil to be able to breathe and this isn't as chunky as I would like it, but I am just going to be mindful of how I water this plant. I don't wanna like repot it right away. I don't really feel a need to. I am just going to fill up with some of my soil around. Now I'll eventually repot this plant into my own soil, but I feel like I wanna let this plant acclimate and get settled. So even though it's cause it's only been like five days, so I don't wanna repot this plant right away. So that's all I'm gonna do for the soil part. This has a ton of slow release fertilizer balls in here, so I'm not going to add any more. The next thing that I like to do is I like to turn the leaves over. That's where pests like to hide. And I check the underside of the leaves. I usually will bring it into a light source. That's where you can really see them. And for new plants, I will check majority of the leaves. And if I don't see any pest, I'm just gonna spray it down with insecticidal soap. And so some of these leaves look a little like crispy and brown. I just don't like that. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these leaves off like this one. I just don't like that. And this lower one here, I'm gonna cut off. That's one of the things I check for at the big box store is if my plant has new growth or not. Besides pest, I usually try and pick a plant that overall seems like it's happy and pushing out new growth. I don't see any obvious signs of pest. So what I'm gonna do now is make my tea up and then I'm going to spray this plant down in the bathroom and I'll take you in there with me. Yeah, so let's go to our bathroom and then I will show you what I do next. So we were in a bathroom, I forgot to hit record. So basically all that I did was these little nettings. I poured some mosquito bits in there and tied it. And then I'm just plopping it in a bin of lukewarm water like that so that the mosquito bits can absorb into the water. And then I'm gonna use this to pour into a watering can and water my plant with that. I would put this little sachet directly in my watering can, but the hole isn't big enough. I'm afraid it's gonna get stuck in there. So I'm just gonna use my insecticidal soap. Just give it a little shake. 
Before I use the spray, I just like to, I would normally do this in my shower, but my shower is a mess in here. I'm just going to kind of just hose off the leaves. And I would normally use distilled water to water this Calathea, but I am out right now, so it's just gonna have to get tap water. A hose would be perfect because then you can knock down anything that's maybe on the plant leaves or hidden that you can't see. And then I am just gonna spray front and back So I sprayed the leaves and then I sprayed the nursery pot as well. And then I'm just gonna let that soak and I'm gonna let my tea absorb in that water for a little bit and then I will come back on and water the plant with you. We are back. I probably took a 30 minute break and ate some lunch. So you can see most of the stuff has dried on this plant already. So all we have to do is water with our mosquito bit tea. And I'm going to have to pour it in here without it making a huge mess. <laughs> And this will kill any fungus gnat larvae that is in the soil. I'm just watering till it drips out the bottom of the drain hole. I'm gonna leave this plant in this container to let it finish draining. And then I'm gonna get the nursery pot the plant was in, the like ceramic or the terracotta, and then I'm going to give that a wash out with some soap and water. All right, and then the last thing that we have to do is put a sticky trap in the soil and that's going to catch any adult gnats that will hatch in the meantime until this mosquito bit tea works. And then I will show you where I'm gonna place the plant. So I think I'm going to leave the plant here. This is my entryway and it gets some light through that window. I, I do have one plant here and I have a Maranta down there and it's kind of off to the side where I'm not concerned any pests would really spread. And I did clean it and I didn't see like any visible pest. It'll be fine here for like the next week or so. And so the only other thing that I did was I put a sticky trap in the back. I always leave one side covered cause I don't like to see the gnats. So that they can get stuck to the back. And then if that gets filled, I'll just swap this out and cover the gnats and then they have another side that they can stick to. But I'm not really thinking there'll be too many gnats, maybe a few here and there. So I think I'm gonna leave this plant here for the meantime and then I'm gonna move it into my plant room once I feel it doesn't have any more pests. Okay, here she is one more time. Look at how beautiful. It already, I can tell, looks so much better. It looks cleaner. I don't know, it just seems like it's happier. Here's the sticky trap in the back. The pot is washed. I checked for netting. I'm not gonna disturb the plant or the root system right now. I'll eventually repot it. I just have to be mindful that this plant is in a little bit more dense soil. Although Calatheas do like moisture, I still like my roots to breathe a bit more, but I don't want to shock this plant right now. I don't really see that it's necessary. So I'm gonna let it stay in this mix for a bit, see how it does, and yeah, just go go off that. And the plant should be happy. It should be growing. It already has some slow release fertilizer in here, so I'm not gonna add anything extra. I will just, you know, 
watch the plant over the next week and see how it continues to acclimate. If there's any gnats, that mosquito bit tea should take care of it. And any that hatch in the meantime, again, will get stuck to the back of this. And I'm gonna quarantine it away from most of my other plants just in case they're is some pests that may appear later. Yeah, that is the plan. I'm really happy with it. I love this plant so much. I'm really excited to get it in my plant room though to see how it does in here. So probably I'll give it one more week and then I'm gonna move it in here, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and took something away from it. I love shopping at big box stores. I buy a lot of plants from there, especially since I film at those locations. And you can get so many good plants at the big box stores for like, not that expensive. You know, sometimes you still have to pay for the pot, but sometimes you can find some good deals and some good stuff. So I'm always there, I'm always checking, and it's, you know, a nice way to build your collection. And sometimes, you know, some of the plants can be in rough shape, but for the most part, I try to pick one that looks healthy. I always check for new growth and pest while I'm in the store. And then other than that, I, We'll just be patient with the plant, let it recover, and it should grow within time here once it perks up and gets used to being in my new space. Thank you so much for watching this video. I think maybe next time I will try and get a plant that has a root plug and maybe one that's a little bit more sad and maybe we can like rehab it together. I think that might be a good idea. Let me know if you would wanna see something like that. So thank you so much for watching and I will chat with you all later.